In this video, we're going to walk through the first part of a cash flow statement. We're going to do the operating section and we're going to do the direct method. If you're looking for the indirect method, that's in the next video and the investing and financing uh, sections will be in the, the subsequent video to that. If you're looking for a bit of theory on uh, cash flow statements, just go back to the previous video to this one. I did, uh, you know, a 10 minute spiel on just the idea of what a cash flow statement is. Um, but let's go ahead and work through this problem together. The problem's posted as always right below the video, just the first little link there. You can ca download a copy of the problem. I'm also going to use a template when I solve the problem. The template is also linked below. So if you just kind of click on the links below, you can get all the information that I've got uh, and you can have that. So the question says, Turner Inc. has the following balance sheet and income statement information as at December 31st, 2012, and I guess for the year then ended. Um, and there's the comparative balance sheet, and below is the income statement. And I always liked, uh, I like this format for a question. I know if you're you're working on your accounting homework or you're working in a class, uh, your questions might look different from this. And in fact, this question makes some assumptions that might be different from from your class. But this is a nice basic. Uh, problem on solving a cash flow statement. Again, it's not perfect. It's certainly not one size fits all. There's no such thing, but it, it, it does the trick for a basic introductory cash flow statement. Uh, so anyway, we see the company has cash, accounts receivable, inventory equipment, accounts payable, dividends payable, income taxes payable, common shares and retained earnings. So nothing too crazy there. They got some weird liabilities. Dividends payable I know is going to be a bit of a pain, but other than that I don't think there's anything uh, for us to worry about. Uh, moving on to the income statement, sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, some expenses, they, they sold equipment. That's important for us to know. This is a cash flow statement of course, so if they sold equipment they probably had some cash flowing in. Uh, and they paid income taxes, and there's their net income of ten thousand uh, bucks. Additional information: equipment was purchased for six thousand dollars cash. Well, that's a very magic word indeed when you're doing a cash flow statement. It's one you'll want to remember. Equipment was original cost of four thousand dollars, and accumulated amortization of five hundred was sold. So we we sold some equipment. Doesn't tell us for how much though. So we're gonna have to do a bit of work there. The company declared dividends during the year. So. If they, they had some dividends, not surprising, they had dividends payable. Uh, other operating expenses are cash expenses, so these 25000 that's got to be for cash. Uh, the company's sales are credit sales, and the company's inventory purchases are all on account. Okay, uh, we've got all we need. It says first we're going to prepare the cash flow statement using the direct method, and next we'll do the cash flow statement using the indirect method. So. If you want to download, I have a little template that will help us to solve this problem. Now, again, I don't think you'd get a template necessarily in your class. And again, I want to caution you. This isn't a one-size-fits-all template, but it will serve the purpose for getting us through this problem. Um, so the first thing I want to note about the template, and it's just an Excel file that we can fill in here, is this actually looks nothing like a real cash flow statement. And the issue is I've put the direct and indirect together on a page. Companies are going to choose to do one or the other. They're not going to do both at the same time. Now in my class I get my students to always do both just because I want them to be familiar with both methods, but uh, in reality a company is just going to do one or the other. And Most public companies have used indirect. A lot of private companies I've worked with have used direct and as I said in the previous video, GAP and IFRS seem to prefer direct and, and I prefer direct as well. Um, but let's get started with this and, and we're going to start by just filling out the company's name and the title. Uh, so it's Turner Inc. So Turn, oh, Turner Inc. We're doing a statement of cash flow and statement of cash flows get dated for the year ended. Not as at like a balance sheet but for the year ended like an income statement or for the period ended. Uh, and it's December 31st and it'll be 2012. So, as I mentioned, this video we're just going to do this little section of our cash flow statement, the direct method operating uh, section. So I'm going to zoom in on that and I'm going to kind of leave the indirect method off to the side there. So cash flows from operating activities, the first thing we're looking for is cash collections from customers. And what I encourage my students to do and what I'd encourage you to do 
is to look at the financial statements and say what counts are involved in getting cash out of my customers. My students are always good at this one. They always get it. The two main accounts involved in getting cash out of my customers are sales on the income statement and accounts receivable on the balance sheet. Those are the two main accounts involved in collecting cash from your customers. So I'm going to give you a formula now. And again, this isn't one size fits all. It works for this problem. It doesn't work for every single cash flow statement you're going to look at. But the formula I would use for cash collections from customers is sales, we said sales was involved, plus decrease in accounts receivable. Sales plus decrease in AR. So now a lot of times people say, and let me just put this in brackets, minus increase in AR. Sales is not a problem. People say, okay, I sell more, I get more money from my customers. I sell less, I get less money from my customers. The decrease and increase in AR is a little bit tricky for people to wrap their heads around, at least the first time. But I want you to think about how accounts receivable works. Why does accounts receivable go down? A simple question, but why does it go down? Well, the main reason accounts receivable would ever go down is because I got the money from my customers. So that's why we say plus decrease in AR. Again, if I get more money from my customers, that means my account receivable is going down. If I get less money, my account receivable is going up. It means I'm not collecting my AR. So if, in, if AR increases, that's bad for my money. If, if AR goes down, it means I'm collecting money. So it's good for my cash. So again, you shouldn't have to put minus increase in AR. As soon as you put sales plus decrease in AR, the minus increase in AR should be obvious, right? It's just do the opposite if you have an increase. So let's take a look at our problem. Oop, back to the problem rather. Our company's sales was 54,000. So I'm just going to know that. Sales 54,000. Decrease in AR, accounts receivable went from 13 to 11. It did decrease. So it's going to be decreased by 2,000, 13 last year, 11 this year. Uh, had it increased, I would minus, I would subtract it. But because it decreased, I add it. So 54 plus 2 is 56,000. I'm going to fill that number into my chart now. I'm going to fill that in. Uh, my cash collections from customers were 56,000. The next one I'd like to do is cash paid for merchandise. It's the next on my template. Oh, for merch. And this formula, again, I'd ask you to look up at your financial statements and say which accounts are likely to be involved in uh, paying for merchandise. And every single class I've ever taught, without fail, the hands shoot up and students always tell me inventory and they're absolutely right you know inventory is is merchandise and that is involved I'm gonna leave a little room and I'm gonna say okay inventory is going to be involved here uh, now looking back up there's one on the income statement that I'd like you to focus in on and again we're thinking about buying merchandise what items on the income statement might be involved with our purchases of, of merchandise or inventory and the answer here is cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold tells us the cost of the merchandise we sold. So yeah, cost of goods sold is absolutely a cost involved with the purchase of merchandise during the year. So it's cost of goods sold plus, I'm going to save it, decrease or increase in inventory, plus one more. And the hint here is that point F in the additional information, it says the company's inventory purchases are all on account. So obviously the cash paid for merchandise has to run through accounts payable if, if we buy all of our inventory on account. Again, that's an assumption of this problem. might not be true of all companies or all problems. So the formula, COGS plus, it's increase in inventory plus decrease in accounts payable. And let me explain why. The reason it's increase in inventory is, again, remember what we're tracking here. This is a cash paid. 
if inventory is going up, I got to buy it. I got to pay more, right? If inventory goes down, I, I don't buy it. I don't have that money locked up in inventory. Uh, same with AP. If AP goes up, that means I'm not paying my bills. I'm keeping the money. If AP goes down, it means I'm paying more. I'm paying off my bills, right? If the liability goes down, it means you're paying off the bill. So that's the reason for the formula to work this way. Again, you can just remember the formula, I guess, if, if your class makes the same assumptions as mine does. Um, but let's look at our COGS, 13,500 plus increase in inventory. Well, inventory, what did it do? Inventory went from 16 to 2,000. It did go up by 400, so I'll plus 400 plus decrease in accounts payable. What did accounts payable do? Accounts payable, oh, it didn't go down, it went up. It went from 4,000 to 5,800. It went up by 1800 so because it increased that actually is going to be a negative here so let me cross that out it's a minus 1800 so 3500 plus 400 or 13500 plus 400 is 13900 minus 1800 is 12100 so I'm going to fill that into my chart my cash paid for merchandise was $12,100 now, I fill this into my chart as a negative number. And the reason I do that is whenever I read cash paid, right there, cash paid, I see that as a cash outflow. Cash inflows will be positive numbers on this uh, this financial statement. Cash outflows will be shown in brackets as a negative number. Okay, the next one down, cash paid for operating expenses. Again, I look up to the question. I look for operating expenses. I see other operating expenses and amortization. The total operating expenses is 27 grand. Now, if you've done one of these before, you'll know amortization is not a cash expense. If you think about all the operating expenses of a company, you know, paying salaries. Yes, I pay my employees cash. When I pay to keep the lights on, the utilities bill, I pay cash to the uh, company. I mean, I might write them a check. I might pay on the internet or whatever, but it's it's cash that's changing hands. It's money changing hands. Amortization is one of the few expenses that never involves cash. If my car deteriorates in value and depreciates in value for a year, uh, and I, I have a thousand dollars of amortization on my car, I don't run out to my car and tape a thousand dollars of cash to the side of it saying, oh, this is a cash expense. No, I just go debit amortization expense, credit accumulated amortization. Cash is not involved with the amortization expense. So when I think about my expenses and my cash paid for expenses, I always exclude amortization. Now, there is a note about this. It says other operating expenses are cash expenses. So not amortization, but other, these 25000 are our cash expenses. So I'm going to fill that in. I spent 25000 on operating expenses. Cash paid for interest. I'm looking now for interest expense or for interest payable. I don't see interest expense. I don't see interest payable. So this one I'm going to leave blank. And if I were doing this on my own, I actually wouldn't even have this line in it, right? Because if it's a zero, then there's no point. Cash paid for income taxes is our next one. Uh, I saw income taxes. We have income tax expense of 2500 And I thought I saw an income taxes payable. Yeah, it was 1200 last year and 1000 this year. So let me fill in a formula for that. Oh, there we are. So cash paid for income taxes. is income tax expense plus decrease in taxes payable. And the reason it's plus decrease in taxes payable is because if taxes payable goes down, it means we're paying more of our taxes off, right? If taxes payable goes up, it means we're keeping the money in our pocket. We're not paying our taxes and we're keeping the money. So, the formula here, I mean the, the, the calculation then is our income tax expense, which was twenty five hundred dollars plus decrease in taxes payable, and our taxes payable went from twelve hundred to one thousand, went down by two hundred, so I'm gonna add that amount plus uh sorry, my writing is bad, plus two hundred. 
So 2,500 plus 200 is 2,700, and that's our cash paid for income taxes. So I'll fill that in, and of course it's a negative 2,700 because it's a cash outflow. Dividends received. Here I'm looking for dividend revenue or dividends receivable. Now I notice the company declared and paid some dividends. If they declare dividends, that's not dividend revenue. That's not dividends received. That's dividend payments, and that happens down in the financing section. The dividends received, we didn't have any. I, I don't see any here. So we'll leave that one off. Again, dividends paid, we're going to deal with later on when we do the financing section. Okay, so I think I'm done here. I'm going to add up this list, let Excel do it for me, sum up the list, and I get an inflow, not an outflow, so I'm just going to get rid of that word outflow. I get an inflow from operating of $16,200. How do I know it's an inflow? Well, it's a positive number. That's the only thing I'm looking for. The cash collections was 56 grand. The cash out was less than that. If this is a positive number, it's an inflow. If it's a negative number, it's an outflow. All right, so we finished the direct method. Now, I, I just want you to take a quick look at it. It shows us where our money's coming from, our customers, where we're paying our money out, you know, for merchandise, for operating expenses, and for income taxes. And it kind of gives you a feeling about how the company gets its money and how it spends its money. I think it's a very good way of doing things. In our next video, we're going to look at the indirect method, which I think is, is less easy to follow and certainly less easy to explain, but maybe more mechanically easy for you to do. So that's the next video. We'll stop this video here. Again, the next video is the indirect method of doing the operating section of the statement of cash flows.